All right? Now, I see what you did there. So what? You're making it look like a digital camera. No, I'm just having, I'm just playing, I'm just, you're making it look like an F7. You're making it look like Nikon bought out an F7. They didn't. They stopped at the F6 and didn't make any more film cameras. So why are you trying to make it look like a digital? Well, no, it's an F6. I'm just having, oh, lighten up, will you? Scrap it. Don't even put that in. If, if that goes in, I'm never going to come on your channel again. Oh, come on, don't be like that. I won't let you have a go to the F6. So this is the Nikon F6 that I've had for a few weeks now and I've really enjoyed shooting it recently. I've done quite a few rolls of film inside and it's just a beast of a camera. It ran from 2004 when Nikon first introduced it and it only stopped producing it last year in 2020. Uh, I suppose Nikon suddenly thought, you know what, <laughs> film's dead as far as they're concerned. They're going to continue with their mirrorless cameras and probably phase out DSLR altogether at some point. But this camera is fantastic. I've got the Nikon F5 and uh, in Inside that, that's, it. that's another beast entirely. You know, eight, uh, 10 frames a second, and inside that, you've got a little computer system that you can change all your functions to how you want to want to shoot it or, or what's personal to you. This one, it goes a little bit further. It's got a little screen on the back and a menu system. So, you know, it's um, pretty revolutionary, I think, for the, for the 2004 camera. Inside the menu system, it, there's so much in there. You know, I'm not going to overuse hardly any of it. The stuff inside the menu system, but I've been having a little dabble, and the stuff that surprises me um, that I've changed inside the menu system there goes a the train to get a quick shot of that and one of the things I love about the menu system is the rewind mode I can change the rewind mode so when I press rewind and the film starts going back onto the uh, film cassette it leaves the leader out which is great for me because I can just let it rewind I know it's gonna leave the feeder out which means I can use that cassette again for bulk loading my own film which is fantastic another feature inside the menu is how many frames I want to shoot out of the 36 roll do I want to shoot all 36 or do I want to go to 35 I've selected it just to go to 35 so that means that if I'm bulk loading my own films I'm not going to miss out on that uh, last shot that might be half and half which I sometimes do also in the menu system is uh, data information so every photograph I take is being stored inside the camera and I can retrieve that data on a CF card using um, some gizmo that Nikon have got but I don't need that it gives me the information on the back of the screen uh, and I can also put the data inscribe it on the negative itself and it says you know where do you want to inscribe it do you want to go on the side of the rebate or on the frame itself um, I've played around with that didn't quite like it I couldn't really read it anyway but the information's there if you want it so this is like a film SLR on steroids it really is but like I said I don't think I'm going to use all the stuff inside all the gizmos inside this um, computer it's got 11 focus points and it's also got focus point settings so you can sort of de designate all of these focus points to to suit your own style of shoot it's all on the back there but everything is kind of touched with your fingers and thumbs um, so once you set the menu system up everything you really need to do for your shoot is all on your hands and fingers and thumbs a bit like a a modern DSLR today. It's an amazing bit of technology. So I'm at this old Victorian pier in Ride on the Isle of Wight. It's bleeding cold out there and I'm going to be taking some shots of some detail around this pier and then I'm going to get off to the streets and do some detail there. I've set my aperture to f8 so everything I'm shooting is f8 and at the moment with that 400 speed that I've told the, uh, the, the camera I'm getting around about a 200 of a second which is ideal for handheld stuff And I'm shooting this on, where are you? There you are. I'm shooting this on centre weighted metering. And inside the menu system, I can even change um, where the centre weighted point is. At the moment, I've got it at full frame. So I'm taking a shot of the lamp up there and it's taking everything into consideration, even the sky. So that might make the lamp a little bit darker. I can just go to spot metering, little switch on the side there, a bit like the F5. My hands are so cold. And take another shot. Thank you. 
oh man, I chose the wrong day to come down <laughs> and take photographs down the, near the sea. It's absolutely bitterly cold. My hands are like ice blocks now. Oh, this thing also shoots uh, five and a half frames per second. Quite nice fast bursts. And with a grip, it will shoot eight frames a second. But that's nothing compared to the F5, which is 10 frames a second. That thing is just insane. But, you know, let's not compare this camera with the F5. It's a more modern camera. It's lighter. It feels nice and comfortable in the hand. I haven't got a grip on this one. And it's nowhere near as heavy as the F5 is. Although the F5 is heavy, I quite like shooting that when I'm shooting lower speeds uh, or slower shutter speeds. And I can kind of hold my breath and get a steady shot. But this is still, it's still weighty, you know? Pigeons. Oh, there's a pigeon. I bet he flies off. <laughs> I just got him in flight. I like all this rustic stuff here, all this broken woodwork. I don't know why they don't fix this. You know, this is a place where tourists come on the island. Uh, and this is the first thing they see, is all that shit there. Isla White, if you're watching, White Link even, fix that, will you? Looks awful. But as much as it looks awful, looks good for a photograph. Got the ride pier in the background. Look at that, oh, that's really cool. So I've had to come off the pier. It was just too cold in the middle of the sea there. I was freezing, my hands just went totally white and numb. And now I'm probably gonna get run over trying to cross this road. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the train station bridge and try and get a few shots looking down there. That's one thing that I wanna try and do at some point in my street photography is to find locations where I'm up higher um, and looking down on the street at people or whatever. Uh, so that's something to come on my channel in the new year. But um, for now, I'm going to go up on this little bridge that looks over the railway. And of course, cameras are only as good as a glass in front of them. And on this, I've got a little tiny 50 millimeter Nikkor or Nikon uh, Nifty 50 lens. And it's the only one that I've got for the Nikon F fit, apart from the Sigma um, 28 to 105, I think it is, which is a good lens. But still, this is a great little lens, nice and light as well. Up we go. And there's a train station there that goes all around the island. See if we can get some stuff here. Some nice compositions here. I like this. Most of you know I like shooting, um, trying to get lines and verticals and stuff going on in my frame. I've got a nice one here, all these stairs. I'm gonna stick around here for a little bit, actually. Someone said to me the other day, they emailed me and uh, asked me where I got the inspiration from because they're running out of a little bit of inspiration themselves. I said, look, sometimes if you just lose inspiration, just go for a walk with your camera. You know, just keep things simple. Even if a photograph don't look that great, take it anyway, you might like it. That's pretty much what I do, you know? If I'm losing inspiration, I just take, grab a camera, grab a roll of film and go out and take pictures. Uh, sometimes I'll even give myself a little challenge, you know, such as rust or or old stuff, or railings, or stairs, or shadows, or whatever it is, and I'll stick to that and shoot the whole uh, roll of film, or maybe two rolls of film, on the same thing. I'll end up going out for quite some time, getting those shots, and uh, a couple of them I might end up liking, you know, but I've been out, enjoying myself, taking uh, uh, my camera on a little photo walk. A little bit like I was doing the other week. Oh, that's a nice walk. A little bit I was doing the other week on the um, nostalgic uh, trip where, where I grew up. I like this here chimney breasts and the pillars.
And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a shot of this, this rustic door here on film and I'll keep the negative. So if I didn't want to overlay that and be sort of creative, I can. I'm going to take a shot of this old rustic door with no metal works in at all. Uh, like I said, I can always use that negative to overlay in the dark room on another print if I felt like it. Well, you must be a photograph. You appear to be photographing those dreadful doors that are about to fall. Down. I was, yeah. But do you know what? Is there are textures or something. In what? It? There's textures, yeah. Textures and rust, and and they're just old and deteriorating, and they won't be there. One day they'll be gone. So it's just a, a record, I, I suppose. I see your point, absolutely. At yeah. first I thought, why would anybody take, take them? I realised they're a, a yeah. photographer. Can, can... They're still using film. I Congratulations. Am. Thank you. And I've never been convinced by digital. No. There's something about it. Take, take two shots with, with um, you know, two, two good cameras, one film, one, the, you know, best digital. I'll take the film any time. Nothing beats, though, the joy when I was about nine and I had my first in a Kodak brown, a box brown here, you, have you ever yeah, heard yeah, of yeah, box sure. brown? Yeah, yeah, sure, yes. And, but that joy when those first negative images, it, it, I was doing it in, it was a yellow light, I think, I, I remember, if I remember. And that, that, that was such a joy, the first time my own pictures that I had taken and seen in the viewfinder. Just mind this, this car. Sorry, I'm holding you up any, anyway. No, it's okay. The first time you saw... Um, my images starting to appear in the, in, in the developer. Magical, eh? Don't get that with digital. And one. Uh, and I'll do one more. Shallow depth of field. My hands are so cold. I've been up here for a while. Uh -huh. Taking shots. Nowadays they just point these bloody uh, mobile phones at people. Oh, they do. <laughs> just look into the lens, David. There you go. It'll chin up a little bit. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Pleasure. Pleasure talking to you. Now that's what I'm talking about, old school. Chatting to that guy. He's probably got a wealth of experience and probably a lot he could teach me and many others as well. Um, bless him. Love shooting colour film. I took a couple of portraits of him. I hope they come out all right. This is the kind of street photography that I enjoy. Just walking about taking pictures of anything I like and trying to nail some nice compositions. If I see an interesting character, I might ask if I can take their portrait. And it doesn't matter what camera I use either. I enjoy shooting all my cameras and they all got their own unique bit of enjoyment. Yeah, photography is good fun. And I've showed these things before on my channel. These old houses used to have these foot scrapers. Uh, there wasn't no pavements on the road, it was all mud. And uh, so people before they went into the house would scrape their feet on this thing and get all the mud off before they walked into the house. Uh, genius idea back then before we decided to invent taking your shoes off. I'll get a close up of it. How are you doing all right? photograph. <laughs> <laughs> Ask a stupid question, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just um, walking around the streets and just trying to get different compositions and different things that I see. You know, like this thing oh, here. Yeah. It's uh, You don't see these much anymore and these will be gone one day. Yeah, and I'm shooting on film so I can keep a record of everything. Okay. Uh, and that's pretty much what I'm doing, yeah. Just walking around these old streets and, and well, seeing well. anything that's old. Okay. Yeah, I've got one more shot left. Let me get one of you, look. No, you don't have to, sir. Really, is it? You, know, you can do it if you want. Let me get one more of you. I've got one shot left. Where would you like me? Uh, that'll do, just lift your chin up a little bit so I can see the light. There you go. Down, down slightly. Done. End of the film. Wonderful. That's beautiful. Thanks, mate. Nice talking to you. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank no you worries. Thank so much. No worries. <laughs> So he was quite a nice chap talking. He just came over to me. He was just inquisitive and interested what I was doing. He lived a few doors away. And you know, that's the thing. I've seen a lot on YouTube with uh, street photographers and for some reason they feel like they've got this right to be rude and nasty to people when they question them what they're doing in photography. It's not about that at all, you know. You just got to have a little bit of respect. And uh, <laughs> if someone don't want their photograph taken, fair enough. Um, you know, who are you to argue with somebody? I certainly wouldn't want someone taking my photograph uh, if I didn't want them taking it, you know. But uh, that's what that guy was talking about. And he was just interested in what I was uh, taking photographs of. So nice chap. And also the other guy, David, I took a portrait of him. Nice chap as well. I hope this film's come out.
So I thought I'd come in the dark room and make a couple of prints of the two portraits that I did of those two guys, David, and the other guy I didn't get his name, but I know where he lives. So uh, I don't know where David lives, but I can give these two prints to that guy. I know where he lives and hopefully he'll see David on his travels and let him know. I've already done some test trips on David. Uh, nice guy, he was talking about film and off camera we was talking about film and how much he loves colour film and you know like I said a guy like that you could learn a lot from um, just by sitting down and chatting to so who knows maybe our paths will cross again one day and uh, we'll get chatting but for now I've just done a couple of test strips and the reason I asked him to lift his chin up when I did that portrait was just to get a bit more light underneath that hat. Um, you know, ideally a little tiny bounce would have been done but I, put, I went out to take portraits and wasn't prepared. But um, here's what it is, let's see if I can make a print out of it. The only thing I need to do is just do a little tiny bit of dodging underneath uh, that hat area. So I've already done two times, one at um, 13 sec or 14 seconds and the other one at about 12. So let's just pop that now. And just for a few seconds, just underneath that hat. One, two. See how that works. I could do all sorts of jiggery pokery with this and vignetting and what have you, but um, you know, I'm just gonna keep it simple. And there he is, there's David, the photograph I took of him. I did do two of these actually. This one here was the first one, and I just got a piece of crap that went on top of the paper when I um, did the enlarging. You can see it there. There's a few dust marks around the edge. I don't mind that, it's just that on his face, that had to go. So I did a reprint, and you can see the dust marks are still on there, but I know that if I gave this to David, he'd appreciate that because he knows it's film, it's old school. Um, you know, old school photography, old school printing. So I'm just gonna leave these dust marks in and it is kind of like a rough and ready image. So it doesn't bother me uh, in that sense. If that was a studio portrait, maybe, but you know, it is what it is, a bit of street photography. Throwing a little few dust and specks in there, who cares? And this is the other negative uh, of the other guy that I spoke to. We struck up a really good conversation about uh, photographers in general out on the streets taking pictures. And he was saying to me how rude some can be when he asks them questions. There's a lot of street photographers around where I go. And uh, he was just saying how rude they can be sometimes and they get really defensive about, about their photography. So um, that's what I was saying in the car. And you notice that I said to him, I'm shooting film. I always say that to people when I'm taking photographs because, you know, for all I know, they can't see the back of the camera, they don't know if it's digital or film, but as soon as I mention that it's film, uh, we strike up conversations about film, and then I get information from them about, you know, when their school days, when they used to do film, and sometimes I've met some really interesting characters uh, that are still shooting film and got dark room. so it's like a conversation thing, um, it's, it's nowhere near a snobby thing to go, oh, I'm shooting film, it's just conversational, you know, if you stick it out there, someone might know what you're talking about, and you strike up conversation. Dodge tour out again, same thing again, let's see if this one comes out all right. Just underneath his cap, one, two, three, four, and a little bit around the highlight areas there. That should do. Let's see how that looks. This one's coming out not too bad. Just that white wall, I think, is a bit blown out, which means I could do a little bit of burning around that, actually. Uh, and this is what I'm talking about. The portrait's come out quite nice, but it's just this area here. I think I need to just try and burn that a little bit, see what happens. So I'm going to give it one more go and just use my dodge tool to cover him while leaving the light on uh, this edge around the uh, area as well. Just put, put a bit of a crazy vignette in if you like, but um, it's looking nice. And that's what I just did there. Same again, but this time I burned in the areas. A little slight haloing going on here, a little bit of, uh, you know, telltale tip because I've got a little bit of... Uh, a burnt or a dodge mark there but that doesn't bother me he ain't gonna know about that bosh there it goes a few little dust airs like the other one like i said that's coming from the glass uh, carrier that i'm using I tried my best to wipe it but it still doesn't bother me i'm not going to spend you know a month of sundays trying to get all this dust off um, or certainly spot it anyway but that's a nice portrait of this guy and obviously one of dave as well so i'll let those dry it'll be dark room and then i'll uh, i'll take them over to that guy and see if he knows dave he might be able to give him that print i hope he does because uh, i'm sure that dave would like those uh, those prints but walking around the streets like i said in the video you know just walking about 
and trying to find things that, uh, that interest you or any compositions that you can try and find different compositions. Sometimes you walk around and you see stuff that you, you're glad you went out, you know, and, and went for a walk, like uh, taking a portrait of these two guys and especially talking to Dave about film. I quite enjoyed that. Getting back to the F6, what a fantastic camera. It's a shame that, uh, you know, Nikon are not making these film cameras anymore. You know, no, no doubt they've gone on to other things, but I, whether DSLR is going to stick around for the, for the future to come, let us know in the comments what you think. I think it's all going to go mirrorless. Uh, to be honest with you but I don't know maybe one day Nikon might come back with uh, with a film digital hybrid how about that that would be interesting wouldn't it or uh, or maybe come back with a bit of a, a new film camera uh, if film starts <sighs> that's how cold it is in here look at this <sighs> jeez people say how do I keep my chemicals warm I haven't been in here that long um, but if I was doing a longer session I'll have the radiator on that'll keep the shed warm but I also got a microwave under there as well that I warm the chemicals up with but um, yeah that's for that F6 camera I absolutely love it I'm going to enjoy shooting it more uh, in the future and uh, what an amazing piece of kit compared to the F5 that thing's another beast altogether but I think the F6 they've put a lot more jiggery poker in there like I said a lot of the stuff I'm not even going to use in that menu system but you know it's a camera at the end of the day that I'm going to enjoy shooting anyway guys I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and uh, thanks very much everyone that's been supporting the channel over the year I really do appreciate you guys uh, helping me keep the channel running and uh, keeping me making videos I hope you enjoy the content thanks very much for watching I'll catch you next time